Hey you guys, good to see you again here on Grassroots Gardening. Uh, this is the channel that we discuss all things gardening, plants, landscaping. If it's green, we're going to talk about it. My name is Ryan, in case you're new to the channel. And if you're returning, well, my name is still Ryan, but I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me this afternoon. It has been some kind of hot today. It was the hottest day this year on record. Had a heat index of like 115. I mean, it's about 6.30 now, and it is still just muggy as all get out. But I was watching on the news a while ago that these heat indexes have just been insanity. The heat index will be the main thing, though, again, tomorrow afternoon. Those feel like temperatures will be between 105 and 110. But, later... but I just threw a chicken pot pie in the oven, so I thought I'd come out and show you some plants that are still thriving and doing well, even in this heat. Um, we're just going to look at just elephant ears today, whether that be uh, colocasia or alocasia. And the one we're going to start with has impressed me the most this year. And the one behind me, this is colocasia Maui Gold. I threw this one in the ground last year, I believe it was. It was just a bulb and I planted it back in the spring. So this would be its second season here. But just look at the size of this dude. And I love this foliage. It's just such a cool chartreuse kind of color. And uh, it's just really, it just stands out in the yard. Hey, you even got a little Katie did. Katie did, what did you, what did you did to my plant? That's kind of nasty. I guess he did that, I don't know. Anyway, back to the plant. This one, uh, it's in kind of a part shade. I don't know, yes, I know, I'm not supposed to have Bradford pears, but uh, another to-do list. Thing on my on my project list got to get rid of that guy but nonetheless he's in a kind of a part shade he gets morning sun so the sun's gonna come up over the pond there and so he's gonna get probably five to six hours of the morning Sun he seems to be doing really really happy in this location good well drained soil because we're on this slope out here so it drains really well the sprinkler hits him every morning and he has just been really really happy and this one is a perennial for me uh, in zone eight here because it made it through that cold, cold winter that we had. But again, this one has probably been my favorite elephant ear of the year. I just, I love that color. It's just striking, gives you that cool tropical look. But again, this is Maui Gold Colocasia. And as we walk over here, um, I can't leave out one of my all time favorites. And y'all are probably tired of hearing me talk about this dude but this is coffee cups colocasia this is the one that catches the rain tips out stands right back up but i've got two of them at the bottom of the steps here and they've just done really really well but i just i love the veining under the leaf i think that looks cool and they just give a really neat kind of accent statement type uh type deal for a plant i really like them down here at the bottom of these steps. Now we kind of got to walk down the steps and around to this next one that I want to show you guys. But since we're passing by it, this is that bed that we did a video on probably what a week, week and a half ago, where we came down and fertilized and remulched, and it still looks great. And everybody is reacting really well to that fertilizer that we put down. Got a lot of flowers and the plants just look greener and healthier already. And the next one on our list, check this dude out. How cool is he? So this is an alocasia. And the way that I keep them straight is the alocasias usually start uh, right here where the leaf separates. Your colocasias are usually connected a little bit more down towards the center of the leaf. And um, this one's got a neat growth habit as you can kind of see the leaf almost stands directly vertical and this one will get huge now this one is supposedly a tropical and it can only be a perennial in zone 10 or higher but it's made it through the winter and uh, it came back for me this year i planted this one last year as well so i was kind of surprised it made it through the winter but i'm happy it did because it just looks perfect down here in this little little corner right here just gives that cool 
big elephant ear tropical vibe and uh, I, I'm, hopefully it'll make it through this winter too. Now the leaves on this guy can get pretty dang huge. I read on the internet, you know, maybe even five to six feet with a plant that's got some age to it. So this is the one you see a lot of pictures of people standing behind, you know, beside it with just that giant elephant ear type leaf. Golly, you guys, it is still so hot out here. Even with the sun setting, it's just almost unbearable. It doesn't help that I'm in jeans and boots too, but well, I was working with some heavy equipment earlier and I had to have on this gear. Even the birds, hey Kona, what you doing buddy? You gonna come say hello? Hello. Why will you never talk when the camera's out? But that you squawk all the time when I'm not filming you. It's hot, ain't it, buddy? I know. But anyhow, these uh, elephant ears, you know, they are they do come from a tropical or more tropical environment, and that just helps them tremendously during these really hot days. And they don't have any trouble as as at all. Can't talk as long as they get sufficient water. Now they need that water to come and then drain for the most part. There are a few that can handle some wet feet type situations, but for the most part, what they want is well-drained, moist soil. So all of the ones that we're looking at today are on irrigation. So they get, uh, get watered regularly every day. So we're gonna walk up the driveway a little bit now. I'm gonna show you some other cool ones I just planted this year. And this guy here is one of my favorites and a, and a really good seller down at the nursery. This is Colocasia Mojito. It's got really neat, dark, kind of almost purple-like variegation. And uh, I was fortunate enough to meet the guy who found this plant. I think I was down at the Aeroid show that was down in Miami and the guy was giving a speech on tissue culture and uh, he owns a big nursery down there said he was walking by a cart full of elephant ears and saw this guy that was unusual, it had this purple variegation. So he picked it out and over through the next few years, he monitored it, watched it, then put it into tissue culture and gave it the name Mojito. But he sure found something special because that leaf is just strikingly beautiful. I love anything that's variegated, but you don't often see a leaf with really dark variegation. Usually it's like a lighter white, cream, or pink. But again, this one's named Mojito, and uh, it's, it's perennial for us here in zone 8A. And then another one of the bulbs that we planted this past spring, this one's been a real good grower. It's already got a couple of clumps formed off of that one bulb. And this one is called Hawaiian Punch. It's got a beautiful red, and kind of orangish stems to it that goes up to a really nice dark green elephant ear leaf. And what we could do guys up kind of this upcoming fall since we do have these what we call pups coming off of the main bulb we could dig this guy up separate those bulbs and then store them in the garage wrap them up in some newspaper we just want to keep them dry and keep them out of uh, you know the cold and then next spring we could plant them in different locations and it's a real easy way to propagate and to spread these around your yard. Next we're going to go into the greenhouse y'all and I'll show you a couple of my favorites that I've got growing in here. And even though this one isn't really considered an elephant ear, I mean in my book it's elephant ear enough. This is a caladium and this is one that was given to me by a lady up in North Carolina. I believe the name is Heartbreaker. But look at that cool red variegation around the, the margins. And then you've got this nice mottled white speckling in the center. Now this one's purely tropical. It can't live outside. Uh, we would definitely have to dig this bulb in and bring it, bring it in during the winter. I just keep it in the greenhouse because it likes it in here. But isn't that just a really cool looking leaf, y'all? Love this plant. I've only got the one. So hopefully it's gonna do good and we'll be able to propagate off of it one day. And then this guy, he is really 
really cool. He's also another tropical, and I don't know if this, I've seen it listed as Alocasia, but then I've also seen it listed as Xanthosoma. Um, it's called Mickey Mouse, but it's mutated, and a lot of the times the tip right here doesn't open up, and it'll just get some really gnarly, gnarly like, just genetically mutated kind of ripples in the growth or in the leaf as it gets older. But I love the variegation. Sometimes you get yellow and sometimes you get white. But I've had this, this particular plant um, for a good long while. It used to be quite rare, but now you can find them through mail order. But this one is a uh, Mickey Mouse. Again, either Alocasia or Xanthosoma. I'm not exactly sure which one the botanists have classified it as, but nonetheless, a really, really unique kind of a conversational type element here. And then right next to him, check this dude out. Look at that long stem. And this one is appropriately named Stingray Alocasia because it has that tail and it really does look a lot like an actual stingray. This is another one that's gonna be tropical. Let me pull it out so you guys can see the, the stem. The stem has this really cool, almost snakeskin type uh, pattern to it. Really pretty. A lot like the Zabrina and a couple other of the tropicals that we have down at the greenhouse at Grassroots Nursery. But isn't that neat? I mean, that's just a really unusual, let me turn it so you guys can see it. Just a really unusual leaf on this stingray alocasia. This one too is gonna be a, a tropical, so he can't go outside, or at least not, not gonna be a perennial through our winters here. Well guys, it is just too hot out here. I mean, even with the air moving through the greenhouse, it's just, uh, it's just muggy, nasty, uncomfortable. Even Larry doesn't like it right now. Right, Larry? Of course, they never talk on camera. It gets on my last nerve. They wake me up squawking in the morning, talking, carry on conversations, but you pull this camera out, everybody shuts up. But not only because it's hot, I've got a chicken pot pie inside that I'm going to eat, but I appreciate you guys walking around the yard with me on that quick little tour of some of my favorite elephant ear, colocasia, alocasia, whatever you want to call them, elephant ears just fine. And uh, if you haven't done so already, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button down there. Our yard and all of the gardening projects that we do are just an ongoing, continuing thing. So if you want to keep up with it, hit the little notifications bell down there. It'll alert you when we put out a new video. Other than that, the more you know, the more you grow. I appreciate each and every one of you and hope y'all have a great evening. We'll see you on the next video, y'all. Oh, baby. Thank you, mama. <laughs>